ladies and gentlemen, this is James at Oaks Performance Solutions. We did our YouTube video on the Q5 DPF explanation. I have a Q7 here having issues with the DPF and I wanted to film this video really quickly on a vehicle that has never been serviced before. That way I can give a quick explanation of all of the components and sensors and what our customers will see. We have the vehicle up on the lift to make life drastically easier. Let's go through it. We have our DPF underneath the transmission on the left driver's side. This thing is what's causing our check engine light with fault codes for DPF regeneration. On the Q7s, the Toregs, and the Cayennes, this is located underneath the vehicle. It's this big tank right here. Pretty obvious, but this thing is the bane of a lot of diesel owners' lives in general because at around 140,000 miles, they go kaput and fail. It's underneath the vehicle. There's the transmission cross member. Further back, we have the subframe. That's actually farther forward, but it's sandwiched right here between the subframe and the transmission cross member. We also have the SCR, secondary catalyst reduction pipe here. The AdBlue gets sprayed in from the injector right underneath the transmission and goes through the pipe over to the SCR. That's where it burns off the oxides and nitrogen. There's a couple sensors here on the bottom we get asked about all the time. First, there's these rubber hoses. Those rubber hoses go up the body to the DPF differential pressure sensor. Try saying that three times fast. They connect to metal pipes up higher because they have to allow for body movement with the engine transmission while you're driving. Those hoses get reconnected to another DPF our off-road customers, those hoses just get zip-tied and moved off to the side. There's another sensor down here, that one right there. It's the exhaust gas temperature sensor number four. It tends to be a pain. It doesn't want to come out very easily. It's a 17 millimeter. Most people end up cutting it, putting a new sensor in, or not worrying about it. Then we have our AdBlue injector held in by one little Allen bolt. It's got a V-band clamp holding it on. The DPF pipe crosses over the transmission cross member here. It has some studs and nuts that hold it to the SCR. Moving our way back back we have the transmission and transfer case our scr further back here we have our nox sensor number two after the scr because this has to take a oxidized and nitrogen measurement after the scr to make sure that the ad blue system is all working correctly on the opposite side the 13 to later model years have a dpf particulate sensor it looks like an oxygen sensor it's not it's different of course volkswagen and audi had to be special these are all the sensors for the pipes that the majority of customers will end up replacing Placing. Then, of course, there's just standard exhaust clamp with some 13s. The fluid you see dripping off this is penetrating oil because these things tend to be rather rusty and crusty. One of the issues we commonly see with customers who live up north in rust states, this is the flex joint. This thing will rust and corrode and fail when people go to loosen these studs. These studs here for the DPF where they connect to the main cat pipe off the back of the turbo, it's usually easier just to break them with like a stud twist socket. So we wanted to do a quick explanation of this. This is all getting replaced on this vehicle. We have the DPF that we're loosening from the flex joint. These two nuts, the top one and the bottom one, really easy to get at. You can get a normal wrench on them. The third one that's on the back side, whoo buddy, that thing is a nightmare to try and get access to. It's inside that wobble socket right there. I actually go through the suspension opening over and around to it with a 12 millimeter wobble socket. So there's the ratchet, there's the long wobble socket. You go through the opening, try and reach around. These rubber hoses, they have spring clamps holding them on. You just loosen the spring clamp, slide it back, some silicone spray lubricant, penetrating oil, whatever. It'll come right off. Now, they can be a little stuck. This one, I had to work free with a pick to get it to come off the metal pipe. It will come off, then they can just be zip tied out of the way. Dealing with the AdBlue injector, there's a four millimeter Allen bolt here. You loosen this all the way, so that way you can separate the tab and pop it off. It's like a V-band clamp, but at an OEM level. And then this thing just pulls right off. By the way, that exhaust gas temperature sensor over there, it's a 17, it normally sits in there like that. When you take the transmission cross member off, you have all the room in the world to get to that thing. So just go unscrew it, take it out. Most of the time, most people are forced to cut it. This one came right out nice and easy to get this nox sensor number two out it's a 22 millimeter we have a crow's foot style make life easier for herself put that on there crack that thing loose the dpf particulate sensor it's a 24 i just use a wrench crack it loose and they should spin right out and zip time out of the way okay so we have the dpf out along with the scr came out pretty straightforward easy so dpf is this big tank right here normally we end up breaking these studs but this one came loose really easily surprisingly the socket i was trying to convey 
way for getting on this nut. It's a long wobble. What I was doing is actually trying to turn it from the side like this through the suspension. That's how I was able to get such a good angle on it. This is an old snap-on long specialty tool. It's actually for Toyota and Lexus transmission oil pan bolts. They now sell it as a power takeoff socket, I believe. It's just a 12 millimeter six point long wobble on a stick. So that's how I get at that and make life drastically easier. Most people end up just cutting these or breaking them to deal with them. Moving back, we have a couple hangers for the exhaust. There's a rubber hanger that goes right there we've popped off. One on the back here we've also popped off. AdBlue injector normally attaches there. We didn't take these nuts loose to join the DPF pipe to the SCR. The number four EGT sensor, the main section of the SCR, secondary catalyst reduction. NOx sensor number two came out really easily. The DPF sensor did not want to come out. It just was frozen. We had heated it up with a map gas torch for a few minutes and it just wouldn't come loose. So I said, forget it. We'll just take it out with it. Now the Q7 looks like this with everything removed. Here we have an aftermarket exhaust system that we installed on this because it's moving to Mexico and moving out of the country. So this is an aftermarket exhaust system. This pipe installs here, goes up and over, goes to the connection, comes around, goes over like this, connects to the standard clamp. Everything gets zip tied out of the way. That one, that one, disconnect that, act as a stopper. Then the sensor there. Yeah, thank you very much.